Friday, gentlemen. Yes. Now, if you haven't figured out yet, this is not live. Everybody calm down. All right, we're going back live next week. You can still consider it Flaming Dragon Friday, but think about this one as almost a bye week. It's the, still live to do. Yeah, it's, it's, and that joke's going to make a lot more sense once I hit this, when people are about to get super excited because there's a really special interview we have oh, on the yeah. show today. Uh, but, but, I'm still not going to say, oh boy's name to my right, but consider this the bye week in the regular season yeah. schedule. Jake's of, running. Of we're the getting healthy. Tra- Jake's running. running Actually, I'm not. I'm swimming, Friday. if you really want to know. Well, where are you right now? Flying. Where am I right now? I am, I'm going to be honest, I am, ha- I am j- sitting on a beach, sitting on the beach, yeah, drinking a drink, and just looking at the ocean, Bloodlight. and wondering how far away I am from Seven Footer Island. <sighs> Probably pretty close. Probably pre- I just got to make one call, that's all. You know, I totally invented that phrase as well. But, we go over the SEC win totals. Who gets the overs? Who gets the unders for 2024? Wrestling superstar Kane and Mayer now is going to join us. And we have a Huddle Up Super Bowl edition. You don't want to miss. Huddle up, Dave. It's a Friday, even though it's a pre-recorded edition of Crane and Company. Rarry, rarry. Hello, world. Thank you for joining us. As you know, as I said earlier, this is not a live show. It's pre-recorded, but we got a hell of a show for you. And I want the chat popping. Flaming Dragon, talk to him for a second. Chat, be popping, yo. (laughs) Okay, I didn't ask you to turn to vanilla ice, but I guess that's going to work. Let's Never start. good enough. With you. Oh, yeah, it is. It, it is good. good enough. I just, I expect Never greatness. Enough. I saw more of an M M&M and M. I expect than vanilla ice. Thank you, Dave. First off, that's one of Mom's the top huh? spaghetti. Top. <laughs> Who I saw is, <laughs> had the most CD sales of any rapper <laughs> in the history. Dude, this is your funniest. fun fact today. Well, I didn't plan on it, but there well, you that, go. That's yeah. a fun fact. In one of the, the second. One of the funniest memes that I've ever seen in my life was when Dan Campbell and them won the their first playoff game. And it was Dan Campbell and the and his boys rolling up from Detroit, and it was the picture of Eminem from Eight Mile in the car with with all of his buddies yeah. going to the shelter to rap. But it was Dan Campbell's face superimposed on on Eminem. Detroit, so I that, baby. I thought that was absolutely hilarious. That was but hilarious. as you know, sitting to my left, he's about as tall as Kane. To be honest with you, David Cohn, he knows him, but he don't got to walk with one. And then my brother. Unbelievably good guy. Maybe the best guy around. But you don't even feel genuine. With it's, him, right? I can't even. With he Cone, complains when, when, when he I does David so intros. It just feels so genuine and real and, and, and heartfelt. When he does mine, it's just. It's That's your fake. brother. It's all fake. It's like Britney Spears. And I let him out. Let her I'll out. Tell you what. Why don't you? Why don't you? Her, well, why don't you write me a letter? I'm running out of toilet paper at the house. Anyway, David. Oh, that was so funny. Last time I heard it, I fell off my dinosaur. You want some fancy sauce or what? <laughs> Look, what's worse than running with scissors? Oh. Speaking of toilet paper, though, all right, we're talking SEC football. And make your yes! jokes. Make your jokes. <laughs> I know that Auburn is the one I'm referring to because we throw toilet paper on trees. But it's a lot better than what some of y'all do. Y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. But, David, we have the Bet Online, which go to betonline.ag. Yes. Use promo code booster. Become A, a better person, and B, get a chance to work uh, to operate the best sports book around, get that instant deposit bonus. But David, mm-hmm. all right, I'm going to go through these quickly, and then I want to ask you for your highlights, okay? The fantasy files. Yes. All right, Georgia, 10 and a half. Texas, 10 and a half. Bama, 9 and a half. LSU, 9 and a half. Ole Miss, 9 and a half. Missouri, 9 and a half. God almighty, that's more 9 and a half than are walking around the Hamptons right now. Tennessee, 8 and a half. Texas A&M, 8 and a half. Auburn, 7 and a half. Oklahoma, 7 and a half. Kentucky, six and a half. South Carolina, Florida, Arkansas, all five and a half. Mississippi State, four and a half. And Vanderbilt, that's right. They play football, too, at two and a half. David. Two and a half. David Cohn, Stop. give me the one you like the most off the bat and the one you like the least off the bat. Or like, over under, basically. Uh, the one I like the most, I like Ole Miss over nine and a half. I mean, I do think the natural place to start is Georgia at ten and a half. I think Georgia is going to have one of the top two rosters in the country when you look at what they have coming back with Carson back. And then, obviously, we can talk about the Buckeyes, too, in the Big Ten. Both going to be elite rosters. Do you have their schedule pulled up over there, Blaine? Who do you need? 
Um, Georgia. Yeah, I just had it, and then I changed. Georgia. Oh, I have it if you want. I got it right here, Dave. Okay. Don't worry about it. It's right, right here. It. Rattle right. it off. Hey, is it right there? Week one. It's Dabo Sweeney and the boys. And that's in Atlanta, <laughs> right? Yeah. In Atlanta. Say that again. Dabo Sweeney and the boys. Dabo Sweeney? Dabo's coming down to investigate. He's, he's coming down to Georgia. What do you like? Is he coming down to Georgia? Is that at Georgia? For the devil. I like Georgia, mm. Georgia, Georgia Bush. Yeah, <laughs> I see what you did there because well, we were talking about rappers. Yeah, so you got Kentucky week, uh, week one. Week Wait, two, uh, I thought you said Clemson. 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 Jeez. Sorry. See, one mistake. Jump in on these with one me, too. It's, uh, you say one, one mistake, mistake, but it's he one mistake after the bed all mine, Reed. I didn't make fun of him. Yeah, listen. Just look at your handwriting. <laughs> see? see? <laughs> all right, so Clemson in Atlanta. Clemson, neutral side. In Atlanta, neutral side. Uh, week two, you have TNTC. Yeah, they're going. They're going to win that one. Tech, tech them. Chattanooga. They're going to win that one. Yeah, yeah. I feel good about two that. Two and zero. Oh. Week three, you're going on the road to Kentucky. Three and zero. Oh. And then you go play at Bama. You know what? Just for just for, give them loss. Just to, just for S's yeah. and gigs. Yeah. Let's give them an L on it. Let's just say loss. Just to be conservative on the numbers. Yes. Let's All right. Then um, you're going to kill Auburn at home. Yes. All right. Then you got Mississippi State at home. Killed. Let being the boys. Yeah. It's going to be rough. Then you go to Texas. See, that's interesting. Here's what I'm saying. I, I'm going to go ahead and tell you I think over because I think at worst they split Bama and Texas. That's what I was saying. So you All play right. both Bama and Texas on the road. Finish it out. Then, then you got Florida at home. Mm-hmm. You go to Ole Miss. Well, Florida neutral site. Okay. God, you go I to got. Ole Miss? They go to Ole Miss? Mm-hmm. God, they have Alabama, Texas, and Ole Miss. See, that's what worries you. Like, if you lose two out of three. Of here's you, the thing. Let's go through the half, rest. You let's can go, only lose one. Let's go to the rest of the schedule, and then we'll we'll have our first tier, then second tier. Then, then. All right, then uh, you got Tennessee at home. Win, but closer than the experts. All right, you got UMass at home. UMass, excuse me. UMass, oh, yeah. Um, UMass, and you have Georgia Tech, the Fighting Win. Engineers. Win. Win, that's it. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you right now, I like, I like, don't love, I like the over, but this may not be my first choice. I may not bet that one. Let's keep going down the list. Okay, so what about when so I like, said Ole Miss at nine and a half? Let's go to Ole Miss. Let, let's, so that you means got they could lose two games. And I don't think they play Bama. No. They only they play. Hold on, you have their schedule. I got it, Dave. Put the paper down, Dave. I got it. Just backing you. Dude, up. This candle analog smells so good. If you don't, we're gonna we're gonna put somebody put the link for merch in the chat. If you don't get this flame and dragon candle, it's a good smelling candle, man. I just Big smell red. it, man. It's like hey, a smell were you fireball over there? I am. Lock- we're trying to do over under weight, and you're smelling candles. But maybe that's the, how do you think football started? All right, week one, Ole Miss. You got Furman, D- Dub. Yeah, week two, you got Minute- uh, Middle Tennessee State at home. Dub. Week three, you're on the road at Wake. Such a weird game. Dub. Um, week four, the, you got the Fighting David Cones and Georgia Southern. Loss. <laughs> week Dub. five, you got Kentucky at home. Five and oh. At South Carolina. Six and oh. You go to Death Valley. Seven and oh. Wow. They're cruising right now. Seven then and you oh. Got Ar- uh, you got Oklahoma at home. Eight now. Then you go to Arkansas. Nine and now. Georgia at home. I'm gonna say loss. Go to Florida. Win. Mississippi State at home. Win. Over. Over. You I over. I'm I would have taken it at ten and a half. Com- comfortably. I would have said that's my favorite bet on the board right now is Ole Miss okay. over nine and a half. Okay, that's we've gone through two teams. A lot left. All right. A lot left. Yeah. So Let, what do you like? I like the under for Georgia. You do you like, like the, the under. The for under, Florida. so like, uh, they would lose nine games. and th- so yeah, ten and two. Ten and I two. I think they're going to lose to Bama and Texas. Okay. Okay. Um, for Ella, Oklahoma, for Ole Miss, I like the over. I mean, the, the, you're worried about LSU obviously on the road, but until LSU's defense starts to show up, I think Ole Miss has a uh, has a better prep. We've got we we've got to go through Texas and Bama schedule. Let us know in the chat too as well. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Uh, yeah. w- what's your favorite? Uh, what's your least favorite? Let's go over Texas and Bama's schedule, too. All right, going Texas up. As I, it's really going to be hard for me to not go through all these schedules. Yeah. yeah. Just to see. All right, uh, Texas, week one, you got Colorado State at home. Dub. You go to Michigan. Dub. You got no. UTSA at home. Dub. ULM at home. Dub. Mississippi State at home. Win. Oklahoma at home. Win. Georgia at home. Win. All right. That's seven. That's the next one. You go on the road. Vanderbilt. <sighs> when? Is the stadium finished or not? <laughs> <laughs> well, the good part is Texas' stadiums. All right, then you got Florida at home. When? You go to Arkansas, and the fighting used to be Coach Sam Pittman's. When? Is All he right. there by then, you think? No, he's gone. Think he's gone. Um, Kentucky at home. When? 
And then you finish it on the road at AM. Loss. 11 and 1. Wow. But I'm not betting that. I would not bet. Texas, I don't like it enough to bet it. And I can go ahead and tell you, I don't like Bama's enough to bet it. Year one in Kalen DeBoer. All right, I'll pull that I got to see it. Let's do Bama. Alabama's nine and a half on the. Nine and a half on Bama. Week one, you got the Fighting Hilltoppers in Western Kentucky. When? When? USF. At, at home. home this time. At home. Look, <laughs> Golish and them, uh, it's, you feel it like it's no a joke win. down there, but Bama's going to win. All right, week three at Wisconsin. Win. Don't do it again, dude. Win. You did it last year in Wisconsin, this was the worst. Oh, you're talking about picking with, I didn't pick Wisconsin to beat Bama. I thought Wisconsin was going to have a better year. I'm going to, I'll say win for Bama on that one. You got Georgia at home? I don't know. Keep going. Um, at Vandy. <laughs> win. <laughs> don't laugh at that. South Carolina at home. Win. Um, the fighting Josh Heupels. Where? At Tennessee. Loss. Mizzou at home. That one's tricky. That'll be interesting. Coming off That's the, the one I'm looking at. That'll be fun. Over, over that now. may make or break the, the nine and a half. Tough line. stretch right here. You're at Tennessee, Mizzou at home, at LSU. Ooh. Yeah. After, coming off a bye. Ooh. Other than this one, then you go to Oklahoma. We have Mercer at home. Then you go to Oklahoma. Then you finish with Auburn at home. Not, not touching, but if I had to touch, under. I think so, too. If I had to play, it'd be the under. Yeah. I, I don't think that's crazy. But then again, we've seen them win double digit. But, double yeah, digit I know, but that, that so long. Napoleon's not on the sidelines walking around. Here. I know. It's, it's he's weird. exiled now. Yeah. Well, he's self exiled. It's weird yeah, to he's self exiled himself. Uh, let's go on the other end of the spectrum right here. Let's go Vanderbilt two and okay. a half because this may be my favorite bet on the board. Okay. After that, I want to talk about South Carolina because I have something interesting. Oh, about you that do, one. David. Break down uh, Vanderbilt real quick. All right, let's break it down. It's not great. All right, week one, Virginia Tech at home. In the That's conference. a winnable game. In the That's a winnable game. It's a but losable also, game, too. Oh, well, every game's a losable game of Vanderbilt. There's only some that are winnable. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll say disgusting. they lose, though. Let's say loss. Oh. Um, Alcorn, week two at home. There's one. Week three on the road at Georgia State. Winnable just lost Georgia their State head coach. Beat you, man. Give me a win. Vanderbilt starts out two and one. And if, if Brent prying them, I know they figured it out a little bit at the end there at Virginia Tech. Look, I don't even have to read. Like, look, You want to know the over and under for Vanderbilt season? It's going to come down to this. Virginia Tech, Alcorn, Georgia State, and Ball State. Ball State at home? At home. I'm over. I'm smashing that over. You like that, the over, huh? Other than that, it's at Missouri, Alabama at home, at Kentucky, Texas at home, at Auburn, South Carolina at home, at LSU, Tennessee at home. Yeah, you're not winning one of those. Maybe Auburn. No. So New Mexico State can do it, Vandy. Can well, do it. they brought in New Mexico State's quarterback and head coach to help. Yeah. Auburn did? Vanderbilt did. Oh, yeah. Pavia, yeah. the guy who just ripped Auburn's heart out and showed it to him. He's like a Vandy now. Right? Jim Carrey from Dumb and Dumber. Tell me. Might so be. South Carolina is five and a half. I'll, I'll do the same thing that uh, Dragon did. I'll just talk about the non-conference to start for South Carolina. Old Dominion, Akron. Lynn. Wofford win, and they do have Clemson at the end of the year. Obviously, and Vandy, where's that state at? rivalry? But they have Vanderbilt, and the Clemson game is at Clemson. See, this I don't even fight. All right, so I got four. Yeah, I got four. four. What's in between the sandwich? Four. four. Okay, uh, LSU at home, Kentucky. Yeah. They have Kentucky on the road. LSU at home. Uh, they have Ole Miss at home. Alabama on the road. Oklahoma on the road. Texas A and M comes to town. Uh, then they have Vanderbilt on the road. Missouri comes to them. So they need to just win a, a game in conference. Shane Beamer. Well, Give me the over. I would lean over. Yeah, I, I would lean over. over. And I hope they do. I, I really hope they do. But I mean, that. Yeah, I mean, too. God. I mean, outside of. Nobody has a walk in the park in the SEC. I like well, the Well, if you under. have. You like the under? Uh, well, so if you, he, had no. him losing to, you had him losing to Clemson at the end of the year? Yes. Clemson, who's going to be the quarterback for South Carolina? Lenora Sellers. How much do we believe? Like, well, we got to see them, but from what I've heard, they, they I think they're going to be better up front. Obviously, they missed in the transfer portal last year. Here's the, I, I obviously have no connection to South Carolina as a fan, right? I'm a fan of one team. I'm not one of these guys that's a fan of multiple teams. But we always look at things in, in an even nature. Here, we all been in the business. We know how the sausage is made. And to be honest, we Auburn hasn't sent me a check yet, so I'm gonna call it how I see it. If Shane Beamer does not hit this over, they are going to fire him. Yes. Yeah. Which I would hate to I see because I do think Shane. I think he's gone. Is I, I don't think so. I, I think they'll hit that over. I'll lean on the over. I hope so. Let's pull for the um, over. 
But I like damn, Shane Beamer. It just it, well, yeah, it's, it's a hard knock like him. I just like you lose Spencer Rattler, and people really don't know how good Spencer Rattler was. He he was yeah, one of the most important his, players to his team in the country. yeah. Like the, you lose him, you lose Leggett. Leggett is a good Here, piece, and like these aren't like Missouri is not a walk in the park. Oh anymore. no, Missouri's going to be a top at, four team. Yeah, possibly at, in the I mean, yeah. you have Ole Miss. I mean, at Kentucky, maybe at Oklahoma. I mean, we'll see what the deal is at A and M. But I'd like. I like the under. Florida at five and a half. Under. We have to talk me. about Florida. Seems uh, high to me, right? Yeah, I mean, look. Look I, at their scope. Go ahead and bring up that I it nightmare. Up. I think I had four and eight last year, and even that didn't feel right. And they got to five, right? They got to Were five. They five and seven? They got to five. Um, it just, the way Florida's been struggling, it never feels right. And now they have even a tougher schedule than they did last year. Probably a top three toughest schedule in the country. That's why I saw the so, five and was, I, I was shocked. If you're going to have Mississippi State at four and a half, why they didn't have Florida at four and a half. I know it's a new coach at Mississippi So you're, State, all, you're out of conference for Florida. Can you just go in order, though? Can you just go in order? Because yeah. I want to see who they play after. Like, if they play Georgia, I don't need to know who they play after that. Okay, uh, well, week one, obviously, you start with Miami. That's a loss in my book. New quarterback for my, uh, like. They open well, the Cam Ward. Cam, it's Cam Ward. That's a Cam loss. Ward, it's a, it's a, where? I don't know where. I think it might be at home. Hmm. But I, I don't know how they're going to do. Does stadium, it not say on there? Stadium will be split. I have to click on it. Well, let me see. Because that's obviously... It's at... Uh, oh, it's at Hill Griffin. Is that, is yeah. That's at Florida. That's, that's a swamp. Florida. Yeah. 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 Um, so week two, you have Sanford at home. You know what? Right now, give, mark me up for Florida as a win in week one. To open the year? No, mark me up for, for a win in week one. All right. Uh, week two, you have Sanford at home. Win. And m at home. We'll see. That's going to be, I mean, that's interesting. Right, keep going. At Mississippi State. Winnable. UCF at home. God. Huh. That sucks, In man. State. That's you tough. play Miami and UCF, it and then not. you're going to play Florida State? Yeah. <sighs> keep going. All right. At Tennessee. <laughs> Kentucky at home. Winnable. UGA at home. At Texas. LSU at home. Ole Miss at home. At FSU. That's brutal. Bro, you are the, the stretch. They're going to have UCF, Tennessee, you have, Kentucky, Georgia, Texas, LSU, Miz, Ole Miss, FSU. You Where's have the to, Texas game? At Texas. You have to thread the injury needle so— You're done. He's cooked. I, I, don't, he's, I, don't, he's, I don't see it. He's done. Wow. He's, he's, I don't see tough. it. That's, that's me saying you're going to beat Miami. Yeah. Right? I mean, I would have to go under. Betting my money? That's the best bet on the board. You think that's the best bet on the board? It's the under for Florida. I think it's between Ole Miss, Our Ole Florida, Miss. and Vanderbilt. What I mean, Vanderbilt over, Florida under, Ole Miss over just, at 9 Yeah, it's just tough for me to put my eggs into Vanderbilt actually doing well. So I'm, I would say right now the Ole Miss over and the Florida under are the best. Well, what did Vanderbilt win last year? They win two? Uh, I thought they got won three. three? They? I think they got three. They, did they beat Hawaii? They beat Hawaii. They beat Hawaii. Uh, I have to hear your guys' thoughts on Auburn at seven and a half right now. I mean, Under. Hugh Freeze, year two. I you have to think like, man, he's going to get things figured out and they're going to be better, but they're still going to start Peyton Thorne at quarterback, right? Yeah, and look, I don't, I don't trust Peyton Thorne in in big games where he's got to be able to throw you know Auburn to wins. Now the receivers have to step up. I know know they're young, but I, I think there's a decent chance that Auburn could start out five and zero oh. if you pull up their schedule. Yeah, we got it right now. All right, go, go through. We got Alabama A and M week one. When Cal at home. When New Mexico at home. When Arkansas at home. When Oklahoma at home. I think that's winnable. That'll be Jackson Arnold's first road game, first road SEC game as a quarterback. Oklahoma, I think, is going to be better on defense, but I think that's a very winnable game for Auburn. Oklahoma's just sitting at seven and a half, so let's not act like they're sitting up there at ten and a half. All right, then you're at Georgia. Loss at Missouri. Loss at Kentucky. I think that's a winnable. That's game. That's winnable game. Vandy at home. Win. ULM. Win. A&M at home. Winnable. At Florida. That's at why, Alabama, excuse me. I was about to say. That's why I like I, the over. I, I like the over. I, I, I went on black or being locked on, and I said, I, I think if they start out 5-0, I think you have to start out 5-0 and with, with that schedule. You'll have a ton of momentum. If you beat Oklahoma, you'll be ranked. You go to Georgia, probably not going to be pretty. We, we don't do well there. At Missouri is going to be a nightmare this next year. Couldn't say you couldn't do it, but... That's that's going to be tough. I I think eight and four is a is a good floor for that schedule and this team with what they have coming back. Possibly being able to go nine and three, yeah. but you don't play Ole Miss. That A and M game, play LSU. Season, right, that's the game that would probably either tip the scale on the over 
Arkansas. Is that one on the road? That one's at home. Yeah. Wow. So if you well, if you win at Kentucky. Yeah, but win at, uh, at Kentucky, that's going to be a tough place to win at, though. Well, it's, it's going to be a lot easier now that Liam Cohen's ass is back with the Rams. I, I can promise you that. But look, no one, no one stoops. Mm-hmm. They'll, they'll they're, always, they're always just a, a, a gritty group and have a couple guys. Yep. Um, what do we like next? A&M at eight and a half. See, I, I think I'm staying away from a and one yet, under yeah. Elko. I believe in it. I, I like getting back to the grittiness that I think Texas A&M does the best when they identify, uh, identify with. The one I'm interested in that we haven't gone over is LSU. Yeah, because there's no way that defense can be worse than what it was last and year. The, no offense, the offense, offense is going to be as, as good. good. So when I was talking with Moscona the other day, I brought this up. I was like, look, LSU just needs team balance. That, that's what they need. They've gotten good enough athletes to do it. Uh, you've got to be able to win in multiple ways. They could only win in one way last year. And when Jaden went down against Alabama, the, the goose was cooked. You, you knew that, not that Nuss is a bad player, but he can't create the way Jaden can create. So nine and a half. Somebody thinks LSU is going to figure it out on defense, and that somebody's obviously bet online putting it out there. BetOnline.ag. Use promo code Booster. Go ahead. All right, week one you're going to have USC. That is that's an Southern awesome opener. California. What? That's in Cali. That will be in Allegiant Stadium. Okay, neutral side. Oh, that's Vegas. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Vegas. Shout out to LSU for these openers. For sure. Florida State back to back years, and now you're going to open with USC. I whatever love the game it. is, whatever the you want to take the over in this. Uh, week two, Nickel State. It's a W. In week three, you go on the road at South Carolina. That's a big one. That's a big one early, not just for Brian, but for Shane. Give me LSU. Uh, sneaky little game here. You got UCLA at home. Ooh, they New play coach. USC and UCLA? Yeah. God, did they go in the Big Ten? They, they, yeah, I thought those um, were to the Big Ten. I'm going to say when new coach at UCLA with Deshaun Foster. I do like the hire, but you're walking into hell. I mean, you're just going into Mordor, and you don't even have a ring to make you disappear. No. Or those big-ass trees. Or a Samwise Ganji. <laughs> you definitely don't have a Samwise Ganji. All right, let's go to Crane's alma mater. They got the uh, boys from South Alabama rolling in. It's a win for LSU. I hate to say it, you know. Yeah. Keep it close, cover. Is it a cover from time? I got to see the numbers. All right, then you have Ole Miss at home. They get them at home? I don't know. Keep going. At Arkansas. Give me a win. At AM. Boss. And Bama Boys coming to town. Win. Mm-hmm. At Florida. Win. Bandy at home. Win. Then at Oklahoma. Why, why would oh, I bet this? Oh, why would I bet on. Why would I bet? Why would I bet this? Yeah, this is a tough one. We just don't, don't know. We just don't. I. I've gotten to see LSU tackle somebody. I've got to see him tackle somebody. I, w- I would not saying they can't or they won't figure it out. I-, I think they probably will. But why would I have these other ones? When I had that beautiful nine and a half by Ole Miss right there that I can just put money on the over, why would I put money on LSU over or under? Why would I put money on Alabama over or under? I could understand Georgia. Missouri, that's an interesting one because obviously – it's like Ole Miss and Missouri are bringing back the exact same thing. I know. Coming off the exact same year. I don't believe they play each other. Could we go through Missouri's schedule really yep. quickly? All right. Week one, you got Murray State. When? Week two, you got Buffalo. When? Week three, you got Boston College. When? Uh, week four, you got Bandy at home. When? And you're at AM. Tough. Let's keep going. At UMass. When? Auburn at home. When? At Alabama. Loss. Oklahoma at home. When? At South Carolina. When? At Mississippi State. When? Arkansas at home. When? That's 10. That's 10 saying that they win a couple of those road games. Do you touch, David? Do you touchy? I feel like they're going to have a really good year. 10's a lot. 10's a lot. But if I had to bet it, I'd take the over. I 10 agree. and a half for Texas is what's really interesting to me with that schedule. That's that one. I, I, I'm Michigan. not touching. First year in the SEC. But you bring back your quarterback. You, you just made the college football playoff. A lot of momentum in Austin bring, for the first bring time. Bring back a good offensive time. line. You know, an yeah. opportunity to get off to a hot start in the SEC where, you, you know, your rival is going to be starting a new quarterback, a younger quarterback yep. with Oklahoma. There's at seven and a half. So, I don't know. I can't wait. Definitely. We want to know what you guys think. Let us know in the comments. And also, if you're going to take any of these, guess what? They're sitting at betonline.ag right now. And we do know that BetOnline is the best online sports betting platform. It is the official sports betting platform of Crane & Company. 
That's right. Wait till you see what we're going to do the Board of Truth, Justice, Friendship, and Success behind us uh, with our friends at BetOnline. So go to betonline.ag to place your bets for all the big action this weekend. We got so much going on. We got NHL, NBA, college basketball. You can bet on college baseball, women's basketball. We've got Major League Baseball coming down the pipe. So make sure when you do sign up at betonline.ag, you use promo code BOOSTER, that's B-O-O-S-T-E-R, for a 50% instant deposit bonus up to $1,000. That's betonline.ag. Use promo code BOOSTER. BetOnline, the options are endless, but the fun is also endless. How about that? Write that one down in your little diary of what happened today. Okay. Good. Let's see you write it. As always, as always, one of our favorite segments outside of Get Off My Lawn that David Cohn does is the Huddle Up. It's a fan favorite. Now, typically, David, gone pretty deep into the college realm, Mm -hmm. college football realm. But this time, same, but different, but still same. Kind of the same, except, well, the same as scoring on touchdowns for the Chiefs last year on the old Corn Dog special. Oh, God, I thought the LSU only ran that. No, Andy, it's Andy Reid. Mm-hmm. Of course, you know he's going to run Corn Dog. I love Tried it. to call it Tom and Jerry right this time. It's a variation of Corn Dog, though. Gotcha. Yeah. It, that makes 100% sense. All right, all right, the Super Bowl edition. Huddle up. Let's figure it out. All right, huddle up. Let's break down the Chiefs' game-winning touchdown in Super Bowl 58. This is Tiger 12, gun, trips right, bunch, X-shuttle, Tom and Jerry Wright. Let's hear it straight from Coach Andy Reid. Tiger 12, gun, trips right, bunch, X-shuttle, Tom and Jerry Wright. All right, let's break it down. This is Tiger 12 personnel. So we have one running back, two tight ends, and this personnel puts McCole Hardman in as the X to the bunch side, and he's the one on this shuttle motion. Tom and Jerry Wright is our concept. Now, this is a variation of Andy Reid's famous corn dog play that Kadarius Tony scored on in Super Bowl 57, but the primary option in this version is a shovel pass to Jarek McKinnon. Shout out Georgia Southern. Yes, Andy Reid was trying to end a Super Bowl on a power shovel. You gotta love it. You can see the field side guard pull here, but Nick Bosa overplays Patrick Mahomes and blows up the shovel pass. Mahomes does not flinch. He has man beaters built in on this play. He hits McCole Hardman on the corn dog arrow route to end the Super Bowl. Let's hear Coach Andy Reid break it down. We put a little mustard and a little ketchup on it, and good things happened. So um, we call it Tom and Jerry. Uh, McKinnon is part of that. So and then Pat has a read, and we built corn dog in, saying, "Well, they'll you know for sure they'll cover corn dog because we call it They've twice." They've seen late. it. They've seen it. So we thought that would be a good disguise, pull, pull an extra man out there, and then we could run the shovel in there. But they converged on the shovel, and Corn Dog worked out. They manned it up on the outside, and it worked. As if I couldn't be a bigger fan of Andy Reid, he names his plays after food and cartoons. He's a man after my own heart. This is Tiger 12, gun, trips right, bunch, X shuttle, Tom and Jerry Wright. Great stuff, as usual. Corn Dog. Corn Dog special, baby. I- it's so funny because that's a play that they've run before. We used to call it the Utah play. They were, and like you said, they were setting up the shovel pass. But when you have a RPO built off of the shovel pass, which was basically the corn dog uh, that Andy Reid was talking about. And I mean, Flaming Dragon, again, nothing's more dangerous than a corn dog option. No, I mean, corn dogs, glizzies, um, funnel cakes. Okay. Uh, That's what I'm saying. Any coach that names his names, plays after like you're food, in trouble. I love it. Well, you know, at some point, they had to be sitting there and they're like, all right, you know, should we call it an arrow route? It's not predetermined. It's kind of read. What What does this look like? And, you know, somebody, Andy Reid was like, well, what are we having for lunch tomorrow? No, Andy Reid like, was corn eating dogs. a corn dog. Like, eating a corn dog. Yeah, that's probably exactly what What should we call it? And exactly. he looked down and there's, uh, there's a, a glizzy, a breaded glizzy in his hand. But this is the dog. thing. Like, when you give a guy like Patrick Mahomes this many options, you know, like this is this is kind of a screen pass option, actually. But when you give him built-in zone beaters, built-in man beaters, oh, and then if you get in serious trouble, you have Travis Kelsey, the greatest option route tight end runner of all time. Like the 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 menu is limitless at the goal line. It really it's it's probably like what happened when they walked Michelangelo into like the Sistine Chapel, and they're like, "We want you to paint in here." He's like, "Where?" All of it. Yeah. The all of the top. There's like some- you give a master artist a canvas like this with a, with a puppeteer like Andy Reid. I don't care if you're running corn dog, peppermint patties, grandma's <laughs> fudge, or, or holiday mac and cheese. 
probably going to work. There's something that just feels right about it. Endless menu and Andy Reid being in the same sentence. Yeah. <laughs> right? It just feels right. Too sure. I would love to see Andy Reid order sure. some of Waffle House. Do you think he just like had, orders like a tons of like add-ons and sides? He's like, listen, I want to do the all-star special, but can I add pecans on the waffle? I want to be able to check to, he's uh, an all-star um, special some guy. Belgian syrup. Uh, I don't know. Well, apparently, he's all about options. We should ask him. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. And we also have an interview with the wrestling phenom slash mayor slash... Austrian economics expert Kane. He's actually on That's the board. That's right, on the board at Seven Footer Island. Uh, he is. We'd love to have him here. Well, I mean, you again. How did you? Find I don't out act about like y'all would know. How did you find out about that? Because I am the board. Who who told you? I, I am the board. I, told, I, I wanted to fill no, in. No, you told him. Okay. Tell Kevin's just mad because he's not into no. the destruction. No, the no the are insane. Flaming Dragon's just mad because because he's got to hang out with the old boy who tried to do all that crypto stuff now too. I know. What's his name? Sam. That guy. Not Samwise Gamgee. No. Yeah, I mean, I was Samwise Gamgee, guys. <laughs> Must suck. But guess what? If you look at Samwise Gamgee after the movies, the man got really fit. I don't know how he did it, but I know how we did it for our movie Lady Ballers with FitBod. Because yeah. we all know the, the, the workout routine, it can get boring, man. It can get absolutely boring. Doing the same thing over and over again. Some people say that's the definition of insanity. Mm-hmm. But with FitBod, you can change all that. What is FitBod? Flaming Dragon looked ominously before Jakey explained it. Well, basically, it's an app that creates personalized workouts based on your goals, abilities, and gym setup while helping you track and visualize your progress along the way. It learns from your previous workouts, all right? So it's adapting like you adapt, but that shouldn't scare you, right? It's 2024, calm down. And as you approve, it will continue to adapt, and it switches up your exercises to avoid overtraining or burnout. Right, so maybe if you're com- you know competing in a sport, you want to make sure you don't overtrain a certain area. Fitbod helps you out there as well. David, you lost a lot of weight using it. I did. Blanye East, you did as well. Yeah, I did. I, I shed about twelve to fifteen. You did, looking Great. jacked and tan. You love to see it. And it, Fitbod learns your new movements. It is a. It makes it fun. It makes it fun to do something that a lot of people don't enjoy. All right, and it keeps the body guessing. To quote our good friend and fitness consigliere Tony Perkis. So. Add FitBod to your workout essentials today. Join FitBod and get your personalized workout plan and get 25% off your subscription or try the app free at fitbod.me slash booster. All right, I'm gonna gonna, gonna spell it out for you. Here we go. F-I-T-B-O-D dot M-E slash booster for that 25% off. Go ahead and check that out. It is a fantastic plan that you become a part of and then you look better and you feel better about yourself. So how about that? Fitbot.com slash me. All right, cool. We have wrestling phenom Kane. Yeah, he's going to join us. And he's also the same size as Cone, which is amazing. And it's going to make people think I'm legitimately five foot six, like always. But you are, you're let's bring in how much, how, how hard is it to make rice in? You got any idea? They didn't break in bad. Not that hard. I, I don't know. Maybe just mm-hmm. to put in somebody's drink before you know a show maybe but anyways we have kane let's roll the beautiful tape as we promised we are excited to be joined by a man of many talents uh mayor of knox county glenn jacobs aka wrestling superstar phenomenon champion uh kane i don't know a better way to intro it i just want to make sure i got it right (laughs) so i didn't get my arms and legs ripped off but no in in all seriousness Mayor, number one, thanks for joining us. It's an honor to have you here. You're the first wrestler. We've interviewed some guys that have been in the political slash sports realm a little bit, but you're the first professional wrestler that we've ever interviewed, and, and you're the same size as David Cohn. So this is a great time already. <laughs> He's got me. Thanks for having me. I appreciate yeah, it, Yeah, definitely. Looking forward to it. Well, look, I, I want to start. Obviously, there's you've got so much going on, um, you know, being on the political side of it now, but I, I've got to start, obviously, with your wrestling career that's, I mean, it's more decorated than a Christmas tree in Times Square. We can go down the list of, of all the accomplishments. But my my main question that I wanted to ask you is is everything that that, I grew up watching watching wrestling and and you know watching football and all these other sports. The preparation to be able to go out there and perform in your arena, in the wrestling arena, it's just amazing hearing the stories of of guys what they had to do to their bodies to to get them ready to go, uh, and just the beating that you guys take. Can you just talk about what that taught you, having to to prepare for that, you know, for your life? Like what what goals you use to, or use that for, basically? Right. So there's no off season in wrestling. WrestleMania was our big event. It was like the Super Bowl, but we had a show the next day. Yeah. So you could never sit back and 
you know, kind of like in other sports, be like, oh, we won the championship. Now we have the off season, season to parade. to enjoy that. Yeah, or we need to do some work in the off season to get to where we want to go. Uh, so that was that's one of the biggest differences. When I was there, it was common to be on the road 250, 300 days a year, wow. a different place every night. Wow. That travel schedule was really, really grueling, but the philosophy was always, we're here for a reason, entertain the fans. Mm -hmm. They pay good money to see us. So it was always, the show must go on and yeah. always in a different place. And for, now it seems like a blur, just yeah. traveling and, and doing that for so long all the time. Uh, but you know, as far as life lessons, that's, that's to me, and I, I came to this later in my career, is the fact that we're, you're adding value to people's lives, yeah. right? Um, and you're touching people emotionally and have the ability to kind of take them out of their problems and bring them into this fantasy world that you're creating. And I realized that's actually the greatest blessing of my career. And you, you've done so many great things with with the fame that you accrued, obviously what you're doing now in, in Knox County and just the, kind of the different arenas that you've been able to affect because of that. Uh, I know you have a ton of highlights that, that you know, uh, throughout your career, uh, a ton of high points, obviously. What is what is one or maybe a couple that that you look back on now and that's one of your fondest memories? Whether it was you know a, a certain event that that you guys did, whether if it was a, a certain match against a certain individual. I know you had you know feuds on top of feuds. I mean I don't know who's had more feuds, you or Steve Harvey. Uh, it is family <laughs> feud. But what is what would you say is is one of the top highlights that, that you remember just off the cuff? So I had really three matches, and it was when I won my first world championship against Stone Cold Steve Austin. Mm, Everyone yeah. forgets that I won that because that was the same night that Mick Foley went flying off the Hell in the Cell cage. Yeah. So, But that when um, my first WrestleMania match against Undertaker and then also the Inferno match against Undertaker is very unique. But the greatest experience actually happened pretty much after my wrestling career was over. I was at Thompson Bowling Arena one night for a concert that was there with my wife and I'd gone out into the, the, the concourse to get popcorn and a soda and this lady comes up to me and she shows me a picture on her phone. It was me and this little boy in a hospital bed. And uh, I remember I visited at Children's Hospital and that was her son, he'd been there. That was the last picture she'd ever taken wow. of her son. Wow. So when I'm talking about being able to impact people emotionally, you know, that, that was just, that was the greatest yeah. thing because you know, all the other stuff, it's awesome. But the fact that you can do that, you're blessed to do that for mm -hmm. someone is amazing. And right. Something again, I didn't really, I didn't really realize that until later in my career. I think I, I, I would have had a different perspective on a lot of things if I'd have thought that way from the yeah. beginning. Yeah. Well, that's that's the type of stuff that that's worth more than a championship, right. worth more than than the fame and all that. That's that's, that's incredible, man. Yeah. Uh, for starters, I'm not uh, I'm not a true seven footer. Coming in about six foot seven, something like yeah. that. But what do you think my chances are of joining the Brothers of Destruction? Uh, they're not good. Yeah, they're just not good. Let it go. Yeah. Let it go. <laughs> Let it go. Right, we a, can get over there, it. There's another voting member. He has veto power over yes, everything. Thank you. Okay, yeah. the Undertaker. The mayor has. Sorry, no man. Good. I can put in a yeah. good word, but ultimately, please put in a him. good word, but yeah. not good. I mean, speaking about the Undertaker, you know, you're taking me back to my childhood now. WWF. I mean, I, I love WCW as well, but WWF was the thing to me. You, Undertaker, Stone Cold, Steve Austin, the time the Rock's been in there. Like, it just it it was such it was such a cool time for me personally to watch you guys like you said, go and be on the road 200 plus nights a year. You know, how much of what I was watching in my childhood was real? Depends on how you define real. I sound like Bill Clinton. Now. It's still real to me, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> now, um, obviously it's predetermined, okay? Just like any yeah. other movie or, or TV show. Um, but the action and the, the danger and the drama are real. And I was very fortunate now only had a couple of serious injuries. Mm -hmm. I broke my hand uh, and, uh, and just some other things that put me down for a short period of time. But I saw some very serious, I saw broken necks yeah. and just everything you could possibly imagine. Uh, so what's happened, I think, is when we kind of pulled the veil back and said, okay, this is entertainment, well, then everybody thought, oh, any, you know, anyone can do this. Yeah. Not, you, know, you don't have to be tough to do this. Well, it was like playing football. I mean, you still yeah. got hit pretty hard and you had to be able to take that kind of abuse. Uh, so that's kind of how I look at it yeah. is not necessarily the question, oh, is, you know, is all this real? 
is it good entertainment? Yeah. And are the people that are doing it, are they skilled athletes? And I think in both those you could say, yeah. And that's why I phrased it like that rather than saying, hey, is wrestling fake? Because and I think Darren Aronofsky did a great job of this in his film, The Wrestler with Mickey Rourke. Right. I'm not sure. Did you see that film? I didn't. Okay. And the reason I didn't was because I've kind of seen it in real life. Too, yeah. <laughs> a little yeah. too real. Yeah. Well, exactly. I thought it was great. That, I mean, the character in that was once a, a former superstar sure, yes. on the highest levels like right. you. But still, by the time you're following that character around, he's down doing this every single day for very little money on the right. lower circuits, which right. I know you came up on the lower circuits. I just thought it was incredible to like give those guys a shout out because when you talk about, yeah, the outcomes may be staged or set up in advance, but flying off the top rope with the possibility of breaking your back, that's not fake. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Without a doubt. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm interested to know, when you went through your wrestling career, and what made you, you know, from wrestler to politician is not something you see every day. What made you want to get into politics or did it something that naturally happened? It was kind of something that naturally happened. I've always been attracted to government and politics and those sort of things. Social studies was my favorite subject in school. Uh, so I've always found that kind of fascinating. But really for me, it was once I got out in the real world and I realized how things really work, I'm like, mm -hmm. I want the government off my back. Yeah. Right. Was my has always been my main focus, uh, and I think actually one of the biggest dangers that we face is kind of this you know this idea that socialism is a great thing, big government's a great thing. It, it's not. I've been around the world and I've seen where it's been implemented other places, mm -hmm. and it, it's very destructive. Uh, so for me, I've, I've had a wonderful life. I grew up on a farm in rural Missouri. My family didn't have a whole lot. My mom and dad were really hardworking people. Uh, but it just seemed like sometimes we were barely keeping our head above water. I, I, I always wanted to be a professional athlete because yeah. they were rich and famous, Ooh, right? Yeah. And I was playing football in college, blew out my knee, ended my football career, trying to figure out something that I'd be good at, that I'd like and utilize my skills, being a big guy and a good athlete. And I kind of fell into professional wrestling. And I mean, I've been blessed with an unbelievable life. Uh, and the reason for that is because we live in a country where if you're willing to put in the work, find what you're good at, and overcome obstacles, I think that pr pretty much anyone can be successful and live the American dream. And I wanna make sure that that is still there, still there for my kids and their grandkids. Amen, love it. Yeah, well, I, in Knox County now, obviously, you know, been here in Tennessee mm -hmm. for a while. Josh Heupel seems like he's got Tennessee. Yeah. Out of the darkness, I know last year wasn't exactly what Tennessee nine fans four, wanted. We're not coming. About Listen, yep. if that's if, if that's, that's problem, a low year now, that's yeah. a high class yep. problem. Yep. That's really uh, what kind of everyone expected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now going into this next year with Nico at quarterback, uh, seeing the depth that Coach Heupel's added in, and really across the front lines, that's where you're going to bridge the gap between the Georgias and the Bamas and and you know the Ohio States and Michigans. Uh, but how excited are you for this new era of of Tennessee football and and watching Nico who in the bowl game, you talk about tall guys that, that are Ooh, athletic. Yo. That's one right yeah, there for good. sure. Yeah, it's super exciting. I moved to East Tennessee in 1995. They won the national championship. UT did in 1998. I'm like, oh, this is awesome. Here we go. Here we go. Yes. And then oh. the, next, the next two decades <laughs> I'm happened. Sorry. Come back. Come <laughs> yeah, back. Exactly. <laughs> but, you know, I, I think that definitely on the rise again. And yeah, when you're talking about a nine and four season being, ah, it was okay. Yeah. Right. That is a far cry from where we were just a few years ago. And I think the most impressive thing about Hypo last year was we think of, you know, just run and gun, fast paced offense. Well, then last year, he realized that that wasn't going to work. They turned into a running team, mm -hmm. yeah. of, of all things, a Josh Heupel team being, being a great running team. Uh, but that just tells you the talent that he has as a coach. You know, a lot of coaches, this is the system, and we have to, everybody has to conform to it, even if their skills, are not necessarily meant to be part of that system. He's smart enough to, to understand, to take the different players and mold the system around them so that yeah. it works. And then you have a talent like Nico. Uh, I mean, uh, I, I think within the next the next five years or so, you'll be looking, they'll be competing again for the SEC championship. And hopefully, you know, they'll be back in the national championship picture in the not too distant future. Yeah. I think that's a I think that's a possibility. But the playoff is, is only gonna help. It's yeah. it's it's so only gonna, gonna help, help a team like Tennessee. You know, and, right. and heck, down the end of the year, I mean you're eight and three with a chance to go maybe nine and three at the end. You can Perfect. factor yourself in that playoff and still yeah. play for the natty. It's a great point you bring up about Josh Heupel. And we we talk about this all the time that the coaches that are not only able to get to the top, but stay there, it's their malleable. We talk about Nick Saban. Yeah, Nick Saban wanted, 
He was very compartmentalized on what he did. Everybody was accountable, knew what everybody was doing. But he didn't like to hurry up, no huddle, complained about it, realized it wasn't going to change, went and hired the best Got in the, the world best at it, and it. became the best at it. <laughs> right. I, I think malleability at the top and, and Josh Heupel being able to manipulate that system to fit his personnel, it, that's the move. That's why I feel like everybody, you know, there's the old saying, everybody should have to, you know, wait tables for six months just to see what it's like. I feel like everybody should have to coach, co guys that want to coach at the high level in college football need to coach high school for a couple of years because oh, that's, that's what you got. You have to adjust to what you have. Now, Certain high schools like Blaine went to, they recruited. Spanish Fort? What? Yeah, yeah. I'm Whoa. just, again. Allegedly. Again, allegedly. Allegedly. Uh, allegedly. That means they did. Allegedly. Allegedly. Um, but no, I, I agree with you 100%. Uh, staying on on the, the football front, what do you think about NIL and, and everything yeah. that's kind of going on in the expanded playoff? And I mean, we're in a brand new age. Yeah, we, we really are. Um, I'm, I'm a fan of the expanded playoff. I don't know if it solves all the problems because you go to, four to eight or 12, yeah. well, then someone's still going to get left yeah. out that they can make an argument. For sure. Um, it, it, that's been like that in the basketball tournament. You know, you 69, get to 64 yeah. and it keeps uh. on going more and more. Um, but it's a lot better um, because I do think that there were some teams, like last year, Georgia's left out. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were dominant all season long. Mm -hmm. Alabama, which is a great team itself, beats them, and all of a sudden they get kicked to the curb. That, yeah. just, uh, that, that just doesn't feel right. But then you can also make that argument for a lot of teams. NIL, man, it's just changed everything. But we have to accept that at the level of SEC teams and other Power Five major conferences, this is no longer amateur athletics. For sure. Everybody's making money off, off of these kids, right? The coaches are making money. The universities are making money. The networks are making money. Uh, the, the local radio station is making, everybody's making money except for the kids. Yeah. Um, so th I don't know what exactly what the answer to this is, but apparently neither does the NCAA are yeah. <laughs> paid to do this because they have completely messed it up. Mm -hmm. You know, they're trying to apply the old rules and now they're retroactively saying, oh, Tennessee, you shouldn't have done this. Well, that was the rule at the time and they were abiding by that. You know, so th th it, it's just, I'm not a fan of the NCAA. I think that they're very bureaucratic um, and they treat, they treat different universities. Selective unfairly. punishment. So that's exactly right. Exactly. Well, and, and to me, and, and to stay on this point, because again, I know it's something that, that obviously any sports fan uh, is, is involved in, especially obviously college football. It's, I, I have no problem with anybody making money off their name, image, and likeness. Hell, we make money right. off our name, image, and likeness, and I can't run a 4 4. You know, I can't do the one thing Joe Milton can do and throw the ball as far as that. But uh, I always thought that NIL was between, and this is the example we always use. If Bryce Young at Alabama wants to do a deal with Dr. Pepper or vice versa, Dr. Pepper's people reaches out to Bryce Young's people because you can now have representation and you do a deal. Well, we replaced the NCAA, who was really the middleman, let's be honest, with these collectives. Now it's all thrown together and it's all swampy and it's all soupy. But when you let something out of the bag, yeah. like the transfer portal, like NIL and all this stuff with no rules, don't be a you know, surprised when the when the monster comes out and starts ripping villagers apart. It's just part well, of the That was the, the biggest there. mistake the NCAA ever made was was inserting themselves between the athlete and whatever corporations or brands, really, not even corporations, local brands, right. wanted to do business. I mean, no, the way I put it is no one's ever loved college football because they said, oh, those kids out there aren't getting paid. That's not the reason they love it. There is a purity element to the sport, which could potentially be lost if you start implementing revenue share. But again, it's a, fr you know, fr we're free market right. people. And so I think that's the way you're going to see this go. Now, in terms of the, the lawsuit between the NCAA and the state of Tennessee, do you have any information on where that's at now and what the next steps I, are? I don't. Other, you guys probably know more than right. I do. I'd follow it in the news. Uh, they made their opening arguments, and yeah. I believe the judge, uh, who is I think is very well regarded uh, as, a very thoughtful, uh, as a very thoughtful judge, basically said, you've given me a lot to think about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the thought is that this will not the uh, the Sherman antitrust uh, law is the is the big issue for the the attorney generals. Basically, they're saying that you know, the NCAA is is not abiding by that, and the yeah. judge indicated that he agreed with that. So we'll see where it goes, uh, but. Uh, you know, I, I don't have any information other than what you all would have. Well, it seems like there's going to be new antitrust lawsuits on every single yeah. issue or every guardrail or rule that the NCAA right. tries to implement until we get to a point where the, the athletes can collectively bargain for themselves. Right. We had, again, we may not have gotten there, 
if they could have just made money separately on their name, yeah. image, and likeness. We have like, was it the Dartmouth basketball team that the mm-hmm. judge they just, said? They tried, which that dollars. scenario, uh, that scenario I went off on because that they're not driving revenue. They're not, excuse me, they're not making they're a profit. Li- they're a lemonade the stand. They're not making a profit for their school. So if Dartmouth, now Dartmouth may just foot the bill and say, yeah, we're yeah. operating at a net yeah. loss. I mean, the WNBA operates at a loss too. The in, in NBA foots the bill on that. And I wouldn't say, hey, we need to do away with the WNBA because it doesn't drive a profit. Dartmouth may end up doing that. But if those kids really want to have a lesson in business and the way the economics works, Dartmouth could go in and say, okay, well, why wouldn't we just save the money we're spending here, spend that on a, on a profit-driving sport like football, and we eliminate the basketball program. Yeah. All right, we are going to get to the end of our interview with the fantastic Kane. Uh, really enjoyed having him. But first, I want to tell you something else that's fantastic, David, and Flaming Dragon on this Friday. It's the greatest coffee company, really, that's ever been made. And now they're partnering with UFC. Could it get any better? Maybe if they added a Flaming Dragon brew that we heard maybe in the works. But very excited to tell you about our friends over at Black Rifle Coffee. They've got everything, all right? There's a reason they are blowing up. All right, number one, we got, you got roasts like Gunship. Gunship. Yay, yay. Blackbeard's Delight. Blackbeard's Delight. Yeah. Either taste this or taste a cannon, buddy. So make sure if you're going to drink coffee, which we all know you do, like 80% of us do. You do. You do. We know you do. You Even do. if you say you don't, we know you do. It needs to be Black Rifle. Like I said, they source their exotic roasts from award-winning farms worldwide. They offer a variety of ground coffee, whole beans, K-cups, and ready-to-drink cans. We're trying to go fast, boys. You're running up to the line. Life. Let's go. Josh Heupel style. So don't just take our word for it. Go to BlackRifleCoffee.com right now for 20% off your purchase with code BOOSTER. That's BlackRifleCoffee.com with promo code BOOSTER, the newest partner of the UFC. And staying in the sports realm, something that we wanted to talk about, and, and Blaine, we talked about this all week. David did a, a get off my lawn on it. Uh, is is obviously the that's one of, probably my favorite. Get off my lawn. Of the week is get off because David's really a hundred years old. He's yeah, David. Yeah, yeah. So that's why I want to join the Brothers yeah. of Destruction. Yeah, like you see him out there. <laughs> <laughs> see him, yeah, see him out there for oh, panning, yeah. panning for gold and sitting on the porch with a shotgun. Yeah, um, old prospect. Men and women's sports. I can't even believe that we're having to discuss this. We have so many other problems that we need to be attacking. It's, it's such a, a waste of, of time and energy, in my opinion, because it's such a common sense thing. We did the movie Lady Ballers. You know, you've, you've been uh, in, in horror films before. You're in See No, Ev- uh, See no Evil. We know how, how that works in the acting realm. But just how crazy is it looking at, can you imagine you and, and a woman out there and you having to go full speed and wrestle against a, a biological woman? I just don't understand it. Right. You know, in WWE, uh, we would... Back in the day, we would have those matches, but there were also obviously yes. there were guardrails, yes. and like you said, it's it's not going to be full speed. It's not because the women weren't great athletes; it's just size. they didn't have the size and and the power, and frankly, their bodies just wouldn't absorb the kind of punishment that that the, that the guys could. I mean, that's just the fact of the matter, right? They're more flexible; they could do some stuff uh, that that we couldn't do, but at the same time. Um, like you said, I mean, when I was at when I was at my prime, I was 320 pounds. I bench pressed 525. You know, flex on them, man. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> but to to put me in with a woman who's yeah. five foot four and 110 pounds, and to think that we're really going to compete in that realm, it's not going to that someone's going to get hurt. It's just it's absolutely not. Yeah, and it's I mean, well, it's about safety. I mean, that's yeah. what we we did a clip today on the show. I forgot what, it was a little basketball game, and there was a, a guy playing on a women's team. Was it high school day? High school, yeah. Uh, high school. At it was Kansas. high school. Yeah, I saw that. And um, it got so bad that the other team had a forfeit because of injuries. And then the team that had a forfeit came out and said, well, they're fine with it because they care about the safety of their own players. And I'm just confused. At what point, at what point is this going to be normalized? Because I think this is what they're doing. I think they're going to middle schools. And they're going to high schools and letting boys play in women's sports. So by the time they get older into the college, well, it's almost like it's normal. Why won't women come out and stop this? Yeah. Because it's, it can't be us. Like it can't be me, David, and Jake, and guys who look out look like us. We're going to come stop this. It has to be the women in the sport. My daughter uh, has a daughter herself, and mm-hmm. I asked my daughter, "How would you feel if 
my granddaughter, Madison, had to compete against boys in certain sports. And it's like, there's no way. It's, just, it's not fair. Yeah. It's not. Right? And so we do all this stuff with like Title IX mm-hmm. to say that women's sports, and I, you know, that they should get funding just like men's. Okay. But now we've like completely destroyed that yeah. by, by saying, well, it's all, it's all kind of men's sports now, yeah. which doesn't, you know, never makes any sense. And also the reason we have different divisions, just like weight class, uh, mm-hmm. expertise level and all that is for competition and for safety. Yeah. Right. And we've, we've done that like throughout human history. Yeah. And all of a sudden we're throwing all these things out and saying that, oh, it's no big deal and everybody compete against everybody else. Well, what are we going to throw that out in boxing or MMA or well, what happens know, with the CTE things? stuff? Yeah. Everybody's yeah. talking about CTE and football. Hey, we got to limit the, yeah. we don't want brain injuries, but yeah, sure. Girl. I love Go, out, go out here. Exactly. Yeah. That's go out here point. and play against guys. Cause you know, it just, it's, it's normal. It's right. Thank God for Riley Gaines. Yeah. No, our, our friend Riley Gaines back there on the poster. Um, I love you bring up boxing, though, because no one in their right mind would ever say, okay, Mike Tyson is going to fight Floyd Mayweather. Right. You know, a heavyweight against a welterweight. Exactly. Like, There's w- just different. We have different divisions, even for the greatest male fighters in the world. But all of a sudden, we're not going to have a partition between men and women's sports. Uh, I do want to ask, what did you think about Blaine's technique with his choke slam and lady ballers? <laughs> It be was, honest with me. Shoot it, me straight. No, it, it was good. good. It was good. Uh, how many takes did he say he had to do, though? Well, 11. That got it more. So, yeah, <laughs> that, 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 that wasn't on me, though. I felt like it was more on her. The first one, she did. She had to brace. Well, didn't know. All right? Because, like, like when, when you go back to that trade, like, she was... That was real. Yeah. Like, she was getting slammed to the ground 11 times. 11 times. Look, I'm still working on it. But hopefully well, I can be part of the Brothers of Destruction. No, 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 no. No, don't try and wiggle your way in. Yeah. Well, look, we'll talk don't about it. Don't try and we'll just sneak. You, we'll I know what you it. do. You no, just, we'll talk about like it. Like El Chapo, the, just burrow your way out of it. It's in the works. In. Um, but a lot of people don't know, Blaine walked around in that outfit for the next two weeks. Tried to keep it. You were going to wear it for Halloween, weren't you? Three weeks. Three weeks. Three weeks. Don't, just, don't sell me short. That that pink. I look outfit. good in pink wrestling outfit. I'm going to be Kane for Halloween this year. I already figured it out. I may too. You're not tall enough. Whoa. So that was Hydas. That was a Hydas. Why? I'm sorry. Why do you have to do that Hidism to me? Hydas is a thing, though. It is. Oh, oh yes. Hydas. I deal with it every day. I'm surprised ageism. you don't. Ageism. Yeah. I oh, know ageism. I mean, you can, like, <laughs> ism. Like, I didn't realize, you know. I wish the Hydasm thing, like, back when I was flying all, like, all the time, like, two yeah. or three times a week. I wish the hiatism had been a thing back then. Well, like, well you oh, know, I now people, people are coming out saying that the plane seats have to be bigger, yeah. which I, for one, don't hate. Yeah, I don't. It's, it's the reasoning behind it. It's the of, reasoning yeah. behind it. I don't like it, but if the outcome gets, and I'm only, I'm about six one and three quarters. I mean, I know you guys sitting on an airplane. What are you laughing about over there? It's just the fact you have to say six one, six and, one and three quarters. And three quarters. <laughs> right. Well, I'm yeah, surrounded yeah, by yeah. giants, yeah. especially now, and one of them's a mayor. All right, it. so I'm, I, uh, just, I'm over six. I'm like five inches over average. I'm the, <laughs> I'm gonna be the tallest guy in North Korea right now. That is really? facts. That's big facts. I have to ask one more wrestling question because I don't get to do this every day. Mayor Ken, I gotta ask you. <laughs> <laughs> WWF, WCW, two different entities. I always wanted to see Stone Cold Steve Austin wrestle Goldberg. Never got to see that. Right? What was it like? Was there crossover with the other organization? Um, you know, did you guys ever see each other? And who would have been the wrestler in WCW you would have most wanted to fight? There wasn't crossover back in the day because we were two separate companies. Obviously, then WWE ended up buying WCW, uh, so it was all incorporated together. Now, on a personal level, like you know, people would come back, leave, and come back, and sure. all that sort of stuff. So, uh, but like formally, business-wise, there wasn't anything. It wasn't a WCW wrestler, but the person that I never got to wrestle or even meet that I wanted to, it would have been Andre the Giant. Mm. He passed away right when I was getting into the wrestling business. But that would have been the person that I would have uh, would have liked to meet. And you know, he was like eight inches taller than me and that is 150 just, wow. pounds heavier. But actually, I guess at one point, 250 pounds heavier. See, like, yeah, it, it's unbelievable. Well, so you said you never got to meet him, right? You know, yeah. but I'm sure the stories that you yes. heard about it, like when you look at a picture of this guy's hand next yeah. to a beer can, that's what did it. They me. say you could put a, a half dollar through his ring or something. Yeah. You hear all those stories right. about him. Uh, is, is there one just Andre the Giant story that, that you remember that? <laughs> yeah, so I was friends with Tim White, who was one of our referees, and he used to drive Andre back in the day. They had a specially made van for him. <laughs> Especially uh, made yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. 
So one day, uh, and, and Rondre is legendary. He's a very prodigious drinker, right? He could just, it didn't affect him. So, and he was also so big. Yeah. So one night he's, he'd be sitting at the bar and he's having a beer at the bar. And one of the guys was upset with him about something. This was a really big dude, like guy my size. So he walks up, he walks up to Andre and just sucker punches him right, right in the side of the head. And he <laughs> sucker punched his, Andre the Giant? And Andre drank another sip, put the beer down, turned to him and asked if he wanted to fight. Like, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> oh, God. oh my God. There's not, listen, I've heard of liquid oh, no. courage, yeah. and I've also heard of liquid death. Oh, yeah. And uh, I know which side of the fence I would fall on. That's, that's terrible. That's fantastic. Man. That's, that's uh, one, of, one of many of crazy uh, Andre the Giant stories uh, that, that we've heard. But Mayor Jacobs, uh, also again, world... Renowned, famous wrestler, Kane. Uh, thanks for joining us, man. This has been absolutely unbelievable. And thanks for all you that you've done and, and all that you're doing. We really appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks for having me. And uh, I'll talk to Undertaker. Talk to him. That's all you no, can ask for is a it. lifeline. That's, that's all you, you can ask. You better start doing push-ups right now. I'll, I'll, I'll see about, about my wrestling I'll see about my about wrestling this? If you could picture me like this. Dragon. The dragon? What's your thoughts? You like that? Or? Send him this photo. I know. He took it from What about flaming dragon? What do you think about that? 2024. Mm. Mm. You said I'm never coming back here. By yeah, play. no. Uh, <laughs> we, we have Flame and Dragon Fridays when yeah. uh, when uh, here at Crane and Company. But uh, but no, again, man, thank you so much. That looks good on you, Dad. Thank Definitely. you. Definitely. Subscribe or I don't know. We may get the new brother of destruction, or maybe just the tall, weird neighbor of destruction. Lanky David of destruction. neighbor. <laughs> I'll see y'all later, guys. Great job. The under hit. The over hit. The under hit. The under hit. The 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 underground hit it first. David said it first. You can't triple stamp a double stamp. You can. Take that L. You You know, run that graphic. Let's run that graphic. Have your cake and eat it too. Yes, I do. What is that? Ah, I am ninja. I don't want to be ninja. I am ninja. The over hit. These guys are a great great show. Shout out to Kane. I hope to chat with I said Kane. Tone sewn up Illuminati signals with his hands over here. Raymond. You're going to trust these guys? Yeah, next thing he knows. I'm in the club? I, yeah. Huh? I'm a, can, can, definitely not. You're definitely my, not in the Seven Putters Club. The world. That's for sure. Well, our, our, well next thing we know, because we walk around. Thank goodness the company's profitable and didn't have to go out of business. You wouldn't know. Huh? You wouldn't know, David. Don't your, act like you do. This your brother, you have, your hey, brother hey, and I come Just because you have phenomenal hair. David. I mean, we just got Kane on the board yeah, of Seven Island. Yeah, and yeah and you're, you're welcome. welcome. You know how hard it was to Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. Did he really you know say you're welcome? Well, I'm over here pulling every connection Goodness, I have in the yeah, world. Yeah, golly. The Disgusting. It's you're not going to be here Monday. Huh? I will not be here Monday, but I'll be here Tuesday. We will be live Monday, right? It's the three-headed dragon. Um, but no, we appreciate you guys joining us. Make sure you check out Black Rifle. Yeah. Check out FitBod. Uh, Bet Online. Come on, the newest sponsor. Everybody loves it. You have to have it. You have to have it. You have to have it. And we appreciate you guys. Hope you have a fantastic weekend. Make sure you're subscribed on all platforms. Check us out Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, Toe, Facebook. Facebook, all the great apps that we know you love. And until next week, we're going, going. Gone.